All right, guys, welcome to the Wolves Community Weekly Blog, our first ever blog that we're going to put together for our community and you viewers out there. Um, mainly, we're going to be talking a lot about uh, Imperion Galactic Survival. We'll, do, we'll be talking about Seven Days to Die and other games that we play and what's going on, update news and things like that with the servers and what goes on on a daily basis. Um, so, welcome. Glad you guys decided to join us today. Um, just a couple things that are going on with the servers right now is... We've been working on the movie quite a bit, so that's kind of pushed us back when it comes to uh, our daily content a lot, because we've been recording an awful lot um, as a large group, <laughs> trying to put time together for all of us to be on at the same time to be able to record these movie scenes so we can put this movie out for you guys. So that's really been a, put a damper down on the uh, daily recordings of things. Um, We've also been working on the new 6.0 server, uh, the new map in the solar system and set up like that. Um, you can imagine me and Magic been working on that on a daily basis, and we've got the biggest migraines. We thought, uh, used to think our kids did it to us, but now this is worse. Oh man, I, I was dreaming about <laughs> super planets last night. You too? Oh man. Uh, um... One of the things that we're doing, you guys, in your fantasies. <laughs> one of the one of the new things we're working on is we decided to manipulate the planets a little bit. So we're actually making um, our play fields a little different than even you guys have probably seen in, in other servers and other games. Is the main central planets in the play fields in the center at the zero 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 marker are actually double the size of the normal planets. They have massive gravity, so they're like Jupiter. Yeah, so we have our main resources are going to be on these Jupiter kind of planets that are just devastating. Radiation, acid rain, radiation fog, uh, the, the, the fire meteors or whatever they're called will be falling all the time. It's just miserable. The sky's always dark. It's just a nightmare world. But it's going to be... It's, it's amazing. We've been playing with it. We were playing with it all day yesterday, too. And they, they're turning out to be quite awesome, so we're definitely going to go that way. And then you'll have the regular planets in orbit around those as satellites as the moons to the Jupiter planet that's orbiting the sun. Yeah, there was a spot in the uh, playfield of YAML that said do not touch, so of course I had to touch it. Ah, uh, yep. So we found that it still works. Hey. So we can actually go crazy. And we did. Um, so as you can see, we're, we're, we're custom making our planet, so that's another reason why it takes us so long to get our servers maps set up in the beginning, and we're trying to make sure all this stuff is done, including the movie, by the release of 6.0. But it might not be on the day of the release. <laughs> it might actually be a week afterwards at this point. Um, so right now we got the server set up. So we got the defenders versus the invaders scenario running. So everybody's on there playing with that one until we can finish doing the map. And then we'll get back to our normal daily gameplay and our normal daily release of the videos on what's going on in the server and our daily lives playing EGS. Um, so that's basically the news on what's been happening so far with... Uh, that disastrous mess that me and Magic have broken repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that uh, Magic found, and that it seems to be a really good tool that the uh, developers have given to people to use, is uh, I think it's called EPD. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Magic? Let us know how that works. Well, it's a uh, it, it's a creation tool for you to set up uh, playfields. So if uh, the massive jumble of YAML that's, uh, that makes up a play field gets confusing, um, or if you're like me and just need a, something to double check your work or to uh, quickly implement something, it, it gives you a, an interface that you can actually go on to and click and add certain things. So that way you're not uh, you know, just fumbling over yourself and going cross-eyed over the massive amounts of... Uh, text in a YAML file and it, it it sets up the parameters too like uh, a YAML file doesn't tell you what the maximum value you can have of something but the uh, this te this uh, EPD does so you can have um, there's some variables that only go up to say 30 where there's other ones that go up to 30,000 and the EPD tells you that YAML files not so much and I'm actually beginning to find out that a lot of the uh, scenarios um, 
I think some of the Defender ones, or no, uh, I'm sorry, Dawn of Galaxy, you, uh, a lot of their play fields were generated from EPD. So if you load one up, you look at the top of the file, it'll say uh, this play field was created by EPD and then it'll give a version. Which I think is pretty cool because I've been, I'm so used to using the YAMLs and, and doing it myself by hand, but that actually helps to make it so it actually works a lot smoother and you know it works because it tells you you can do this or you can't do that. There, there are some things in it, though, that it, it will let you do that you really can't do. Um, and I'm beginning to find out, too, that a lot of the, uh, especially the 6.0.12 release uh, playfields, they're really finicky. Like, if you change too much or you, you tweak just something a little, a little out of place, then it, it will let you play the game and it'll, it'll go all the way through until you load that playfield, then it'll start popping up with errors. And the, the bad thing is, is when you look at the code, it doesn't tell you where in the play field it messed up. Yeah, it just gives you the quit to mail uh, error. <laughs> and then it just gives you the which log it is, so you can mail it in and let somebody else uh, give a week before they give you a response to tell you what it is. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's a, it's a pretty good tool. Um, I tried the random setting uh, yesterday, and it generated a, a pretty interesting play field that wouldn't load because it was just, there was a couple, a couple values that were just way too radical for it, and it's like, uh, I don't even know what to do with this. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's been a big help for us, at least, when it comes to working on the files and stuff like that. You can just you are be able to just implement them in there and see how it works and we don't have to stress out like we did when we were working on the 5.5 maps. That was just the same. Oh, exactly. And it's uh, it's pretty quick, too. I mean, I, I save it right into the scenario folder to where I can just load it right up, load it right in the game, and uh, see if the changes that I made work, um, if it looks good. Um, yeah, and it, it, it gives you a list, too. Like, uh, if you're creating a, a POI... It'll give you a list of all your POIs that are loaded, and you can pick and choose from those POIs to put into the game, instead of having to guess what the group name is and uh, try to type it in and, and implement it that way. So, uh, you guys should definitely like to play with your uh, planets and uh, try something new, and you should definitely get yourself the EPD program. and use that if you don't know what you're doing with the YAML files because it one will save you a lot of time of trying to figure out how things work. Two, you'll actually be able to use it and learn it. And like the way I did it the hard way, <laughs> by putting in and changing variables and then waiting to tell the game to load and it says quit and mail. Yeah, that's not a lot of fun. So I... I had shied away from the program for a while because uh, on the on the uh, on the 5.5 server, I had used that for a couple of the play fields, and it deleted the decimal point in a couple of the variables. So we had uh, like the decorations. We had um, just this massive wall of trees and this massive field of, of rocks, and it, it it would do like 27 per area of, of, of a certain um, object and the planets were impassable you couldn't even uh, fly a, an HV through it but uh, in the new versions it looks like they corrected that Uh oh, did we lose Wolf? Oh, sorry, muted my mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other side of things, what are you guys feeling about 6.0 so far? What do you like what the uh, what the devs have been putting into the game, and what works, what doesn't work? What do you like, what don't you like, uh, things like that? Uh, I'm loving 6.0 in the sense that there's a lot more that needs to be duration. Jumping onto some of these planets is a. It's unfathomable where, like, you've got to now think about the temperature and what's good for you with the suit you're wearing. 
radiation, it really has made a complete massive difference to how I look at how I play the game. Love it. What about hey you, guys? Hey, Lord Jericho, how's it going, brother? Not too much. It's not worth. For those of you guys out there that don't know, that's Lord Jericho. He has been around for a long time. He's just getting in with us, and he'll be joining the conversation. Um, right now, we're discussing what we feel about 6.0, what we like, what we don't like, and stuff like that. What do you like so far about 6.0? Hey, I just can't wait for it, man. A new challenge, just can't wait. What about you? The game's been too easy so far. With all the radiation, sickness, and all that, we're gonna go. I can't wait. Oh yeah, stepping up on that topic. Um, radiation in this game so far, yeah, makes it a bit of a threat. You've got to think about what suit you're in. Uh, what suit you're in. Um, you can't just run out there and grab stuff from space like you used to. For example, uh, you know, <laughs> go up in space, blow some drones apart. All of a sudden, you need a, a suit with three EVA patches on it so you can go out and ship in the space. Otherwise, you're toast. So yeah, this is very cold in space. It is very cold in space, <laughs> now, yeah. This is very hot. hot space. <laughs> <laughs> 700 degrees Celsius, so they're going, oh, heat stroke in space, what? <laughs> I, I, I did the I did the uh, twenty death uh, dance in space there. Got early on, I, I died picking up the contents of a drone, and it took me twenty deaths to recover my backpack, uh, get everything onto the yeah. ship, and then get back onto my ship and fly away. I feel your pain. To bring back I got a low death count for a reason, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What about the uh, trader NPCs? What do you guys feel about that? Personally, I haven't actually uh, made contact with them yet. I've been focusing more on the planets and stuff. Well, I like great right. me, uh, me and Magic were testing out his live streaming yesterday, and we found out that you can't kill NPCs. It's the moment you shoot them, you're dead. Like, instantly. Every one of them just turns and shoots you, and they all act like stiff cardboard dummies like you see in the windows wearing their suits and stuff to sell in the shops they all get stiffened up and their guns are pointed at their hips and you just die instantly it, it, it's hilarious well that, that's only that's only the traders like if you shoot a regular npc they're just deco blocks they're not actual like interactive uh you know non-player characters they're literally just an animated deco block but the uh the, the traders and the bodyguard um I took one out uh, this morning during my live feed, and b because I spawned into a planet, no, uh, no, no survival constructor, nothing, n nothing to start off with, basically except for a pistol and some ammo. So I was playing around in the in the in the trade station where I uh, I would peek in, shoot a couple times, and then you know duck away, and I actually took one out. Um, it's just that they're using laser rifles, and they're very, very, very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> axes all over again but good versions now the one thing I, I have right? noticed is while we were building the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the ammo files for the the POIs is that um, you guys might want to hear this that if you go to a POI you'll get either just nothing but minigun Xenus uh, or you'll get rocket Xenus only well it's because inside the ammos there is only those specific one they so I noticed that you have to add them if you want different varieties of Xenu to fight. You have to, you have to add those to the drone base file. So when you've got, um, let's say the, we'll use Aku as an example. You got the drone base there, and you go, and it, you're only getting mini gun Xenus on the drone base. It's because you need to add the Xenu rocket launcher and the, the Xenu laser rifle ones into the file in order for them to actually start coming in. Uh. That's just something I noticed yesterday while we were messing with the files, and I was looking at all the bases, and all we had everywhere was just the minigun Xenus. We That's had nothing else, and it was just, it was annoying. So if you're experiencing that problem where you're only having one type of Xenu and all of your POIs, that's the reason why. Um, on the other side of that, what do you guys feel about the weapon upgrade system? Like the dirt that it actually has durability now. I quite like I, it. Good idea. Yeah, I, I like the. Yeah. 
I like the the durability. The the upgrade though, I, I I don't know. I haven't messed with it too much. I just wish I could have the the debug assault rifle in game. <laughs> <laughs> you get your pay. No. What? No. 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 I'm sorry, but I'm against that too. A ten thousand damage <laughs> assault rifle <laughs> is pathetic. <laughs> with with infinite ammo that. You can literally blast out the bottom of a POI in a couple seconds. And what, what, what was that, a thousand meter range? Now, a sniper rifle honestly <laughs> yeah. should have a thousand meter range. It really should in this game. If they don't get That's the sniper true. rifle the, the range that it's supposed to have, then it, it, it makes it a pointless weapon. I've noticed that myself. And, and, I'm, I, and I'll admit, I'm the, I'm the guy that plays with a sniper rifle in the game. I like my high damage one-shot weapon. But if you could see the character through your scope, through a sniper rifle, on the other side of a lake, you should be able to hit in that range. It should be the only weapon with that range. Otherwise, you might as well just use a, a laser rifle or an assault rifle. Because yeah, yeah. they have the same distance, basically, on every atmosphere and every planet and gravity and whatever. It doesn't matter. Because the effective exactly. range seems to stay the same as well. I agree with that for more sense. I mean, that, that is one complaint that I have, is that it's a sniper rifle. They should let us use it as a sniper rifle. You should have that one guy out there somewhere that you're actually worried about shooting you because you can't see him in your little radar yet. And the radar's approximately about 300 meters. He will take care of this. Yeah, somewhere right. around there. Um, one of the bit of news about the uh, upcoming server gameplay that we've got going on is that we're going to be having to build mining bases in order to mine the deposits in order to boost the economy running more. Um, so we're not going to have uh, the main resources mineable by HVs and stuff like that anymore. You're going to have to build a mining facility, put down your mining uh, auto miners, and actually uh, manufacture. You're going to have to have a manufacturing plant up and running making resources. So it should add an interesting twist to our server when 6.0 comes out. Especially when it comes to our Jupiter-sized planets that we built, and the gravity, and the, the hellish nightmare that it is. As the way we're setting no, is that it up. No, go ahead. Is that restriction only on the Jupiter-sized planets? There will be my, uh, certain planets that we can actually mine on is the, the way we're leaning it to. So, you, you like your home worlds, you're not going to want to mine out your iron. It would be just stupid. What's the point of staying there then? So, you, all home worlds will have iron and magnesium on them. And that's where your main production is going to happen for your factions. Um, all of them. And then the Jupiter-sized planets will have the, the main resources that we also use, which is cobalt, sathium, gold, pentaxid, and stuff like that to be mined off of all those. And those will be restricted to that point where you have to have a mining facility, and same just like you would want to on your home world. Um, the rest of them, however, I think we might allow those to be mined out and reloaded if need be. So I don't think we'll have restrictions on those planets. But the restriction will still stand. Um, if you have, if you want to keep the deposits and be able to keep producing it, you're not going to want to mine it out. Otherwise, you're not going to have it. Otherwise, the other thing we might do is make it so you can have your mining facility in order to mine on the planet. It gives you the mining rights because you claim that planet for your faction because you built your base. And then allow asteroids to fall at a certain percentage so you can still go around and mine it with your hover vessel. We might do it in right. that aspect, which I've, I've been leaning more towards that myself this past week since we've been talking about it. Um, but that, yeah, I think that's that's the direction we're heading with it as of right now. Uh, when it comes to allowing CVs on planets, you know, it's still a big topic of debate. Let me. Uh, what do you guys feel about allow, not allowing or allowing CVs on planets, or how should we allow them to be on planets? And CVs only in a certain size category. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like, you need something that can land on a planet to drop off, like an HV or whatever, but I mean, it shouldn't be uh, some monstrous, hideous machine that is, uh, you know, like, Bob just runs the build. an entire flying fortress on its own. Yeah, you just need a CV that will drop hovers, get out, use it as a dropship rather than a base. Yeah, like, right. something the size of, like, a gunboat or something like that. Yeah, so like it's about size two or three at most. Anything bigger yeah. than that, and it starts to get silly. Or you could have it up to 
you know, party really, because if you're going to drop off a full battalion of tanks, as it were, you're going to still need a decent sized CV to drop. But no, I mean, because the, I agree with that. Because if you got, if you're invading a planet, you're not going to come down with one hundred tank. You're going to come no. down with like four or five of them, and then you're going to go in it and just start a massive war with whoever's there. Because you you want to come down with a strong enough force to survive. So I think we'd have to go with something that can hold uh, at least four hover tanks. So yeah, yeah, probably right. Well, then that takes away your logistics problem. For talking of pie, it's just in London. So, yep. London in your home pie? Well, I think on the home worlds, we'll, uh, I don't think we'll have any restrictions on any of the home worlds at, at all. You know, you can build to your heart's consent, um, land your CV on the planet at a starport for all I care. There will be no restrictions when it comes to that kind of stuff on the home worlds. Um, and one, it'll look awesome if we have a, a, an invasion of somebody else's whole world and they got their massive cities built and their CVs are all landed down on the planet and next you know you're you're all under fire and you got all these CVs taken off. I think it'll look amazing, so I think that'd be an awesome thing to do. There's a lot of hidden planets so where the gravity is so huge now that if you were to take a CV down to the planet, that should be seen as a you're not going to get your CV back off of the planet and that's almost um, fair to say because I think it should be a case that some CVs didn't go down uh, with some of the spices that we've created in the past. Well the way the Jupiter planets are set up it's kind of like that. You go down with a, uh, an oversized CV you're not getting back off that planet trust me. We're even going to be allowing uh, Prometheum, one node of Prometheum on the planet. So if you have a mining facility running, you can actually run it off of that Prometheum mine that you set up, and you can use that fuel for your ships, because you'll run out of gas before you hit orbit. I guarantee you. Easily. I mean, if we t let's say the freighter that we built, the MK4, that you, me and you built, Dream, if we yeah. took that one on that planet and we tried to get off, we'd get halfway up and run out of gas. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you're, you're, there's no way anybody's going on those planets with oversized vessels like that. You'll be ferrying things with the, the drop pods and stuff like that for sure. Um, so I definitely agree with the, the, the whole limitations of the oversized CVs going on planets and only having drop ships for planetary entry of CVs. Uh, we will definitely be implementing uh, turret limits uh, a little harsher than we did before. It's we, I mean, it, it was just insane. As much as it's beautiful, it does kind of drain the server so quickly. <laughs> it's, yeah, tell me about it. So it's going to be more along the lines of, depending on the size of the ship, small ones, maybe having only one artillery turret, four rocket launchers on it, and then that would be like a gunboat sized ship. Then if you go bigger than that, we'll say like the Grendel sized ship will maybe have. Uh, two artillery cannons, six rocket launchers, and six other cannons of some type. Uh, flat guns, laser turrets, whatever. So it'll be a, a lot harsher limitations than it was before. Um, like for instance, the Valkyrie will have its flat cannons, but it won't have all of those artillery cannons. It'll have uh, maybe four um, artillery cannons on it, where in the, the rocket launchers there may be only 12 in total instead of the 20 odd something that's there so we're definitely going to be basically just look at it and say you're going to cut it in half of what we did before and I think that should help a lot when it comes to our uh, battle scene stutters that we get while recording yeah. oh yeah I hope so and we will be, be allowing be we will be allowing the mounted guns. We are bringing them back, ladies and gentlemen. They will be back on the server. We will actually be using them on a daily basis. But the way we're going to be using them is going to be more along the lines of like a main gun. So in order to put them on your ship, you have to design them into the ship so it looks like it is a main gun of some type. So you won't see these, let's say, six rocket launchers sticking out of it somewhere. They'll actually be built into the ship somehow so it looks like it's one gun. So there will be some ships that will actually have the six rocket launchers in it, or six of the laser cannons, or whatever they are, and they will be allowed to be used. Um, 
The smaller ships like the gunboats and stuff will be limited to like two rocket launchers and maybe four of the laser turrets, uh, the laser mounted weapons and things like that, but it'll all be done through an inspection at the shipyard in Wallenstein's area. So everybody will be on the same basis, same page on everything. Like that. It gives you a little bit more freedom for your build, but then at the same time, a little bit more control of your weapons for flying instead of just having to rely on your turrets. Fun to see, especially when you look back on video. Oh, yeah. But as when you're flying around, just having that added little bit of extra control while you're piloting, brilliant. I'm not going to lie, I've actually missed the amount of guns, but they were just so broken for the longest time. Being able to use them on planets and fire out of render range and blow up bases was just ridiculous. Oh, yes. <laughs> like season two. Oh, that was, that was hilarious. Oh, and the good news is I am bringing back the colony build. We will actually be finishing the colony build that we did on Nangus. That will be uh, on our home world. We're going to start with that on on our... Uh, the. It, it won't be on the first episode, I promise you that. we got to get the materials first. <laughs> But we're going to put it back on the planet, and we're going to build off of that one, build our subway system all the way around the planet to all of our mining areas that we'll have. We'll have uh, four iron nodes on our planet, just like the rest of the home world. So I we'll think have... that's going to take a while off. Oh, yeah. But it'll Before be... Before no It will be the first structure we'll put down besides our <clears throat> storage house, I could say. It's going to be our mining facility. We're going to find one mine, build a mining facility, <coughs> work out of that, to get the colony back and to have new stuff of us oh yeah well uh, that, yeah tell me about it i'm going to be showcasing those soon for you guys so you can actually see the starter vessels that'll be coming up at 6.0 they're absolutely amazing i mean just, oh yes they blow me away i told wallenstein one day i'm like yes i need new vessels and him and two of the other guys thor and rally got together and they all started building a few ships and they're just absolutely out of this world amazing so every faction's got their own starting vessel that they use, and each one of them looks totally different, believe me, but they're absolutely just they're immaculately amazing. Um, you won't actually be starting with the vessels in the server. You'll actually have to get to them. You'll actually have, in order to get the vessels. So you'll be starting out like you do in an everyday start on a planet with your escape pod. You'll be getting your resources together to get off the planet and get over to Wallenstein Shipyard where you'll actually get your ship. So you actually have the uh, initial survival like any other gameplay like you're playing on a single player. You have to get off the planet, you have to get to the shipyard, and then you finally get your starter CV from there. Like that. It's like a mission-based So the a start game is a survival game. <laughs> it's going to be hard... It's going to be kind of like we've been doing with the hardcore survival um, escape uh, episodes we put up for Akua and Omicron, except more <laughs> more by ourselves. <laughs> it's, it's going to be quite difficult because the only resource we have on the planet is going to be iron and, and magnesium on your home worlds. And then from there, you got to go and attack POIs, get the resources you need to build your first set of ships and stuff just to get off the planet so you can get your starter vessel to get around the galaxy as you start working. So the, 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 the beginning's going to be amazing, guys. Don't miss out on that. Check out everyone's channels for those for sure because it's just going to be an, an amazing first week. I just can't wait for it. Oh. I can't wait. Really can't wait. Pretty epic. Aside from that, uh, what else is on your uh, minds today, guys? Why do we make oh. it not a soul with the... Oh, teleport us. Yeah. You, you, I, you, start, you start on your planet and must find the teleporter to the shipyard. No, that's too easy. Nope. Too nope. easy? Too you easy. can you can hide you can hide this thing. Yeah, but all you gotta do is find it. That's you, you, no, you don't need a small vessel, you don't need a hover, you don't need to survive, you just have to literally find it. Nah. That's too easy. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're gonna set it up so the only way to get to your system is to a teleporter from another planet though. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, with a small vessel, you don't can leave the system, or or is it? Uh, no, you, you cannot. Changed? You cannot warp. Well, no, that wouldn't work either. Shoot, because you, you can't warp into your system, but you can warp out of it. We're gonna have your system blocked, so people can't warp in. The only way to get to your system is gonna be through a teleporter. Uh huh. 
They must get the teleporter. I hope so they it. have to find the teleporter that actually allows them to get to your system to begin with in order to even do it. So that's the other side of the challenge. And it's going to be on the... Uh, I'm thinking we'll put them all on the uh, one of the Jupiter-class planets. So you literally have to <laughs> find it and get out of there. Oh. That's difficult. Hey, Os... Os Bakar? I hope I said that right. <laughs> And welcome. Welcome. <laughs> oh, we're about halfway through our, our blog for this week. We're just chit-chatting about Imperion, what's been going on, the news, the, the new stuff that's been in, added into it, how we feel about it, our, our server setup and what we're going with it, the new planet builds and things like that. Osmakar. Got it. I will completely forget that, but that's yeah. okay. I got four kids, a wife, I, I'm brain dead. I can't even remember my own birthday. <laughs> I got one for you guys, in the sense of... Um, I know you don't... I have played it around before, but uh, looking at the EO stream, um, how does everybody feel about the chainsaw? I love the chainsaw love now. <laughs> love the chainsaw. I love the fact that you can use that as a melee weapon and actually take over a complete POI with it. It's amazing. It's fun. Definitely fun. We just need more seaweed magic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to have a little bit more on the planet, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you guys keep asking magic for things. I'm going to start saying no to it. <laughs> if you put too much seaweed, it, it just becomes too easy. Well, actually, we do need more seaweed than what's been there. It's been too too little. That just makes for an hour. <laughs> yes, you can, Osmakar. You can absolutely run around with a chainsaw and guild things. <laughs> Uh, Magic will probably <laughs> yeah. demonstrate that right here on the live stream for you guys. Just so as you guys know, yep. the, um, on my side of things, you're not seeing the live stream from uh, Magic's video that he's got up running on the live stream right now. Uh, so you'll, you'll be seeing other clips and videos, but on his right now, he's actually running around the chainsaw killing things. I will definitely have a clip of that inside the uh, YouTube video for you guys when I post it today. So you guys can see, if you haven't already caught the episode of us, I'll just literally take it over POIs with chainsaws during the hard coup escape from a coup emission. So that was awesome. Yeah, can't wait for a gladiator wars where just the only allowable weapon is a chainsaw. Well, yeah, guess <laughs> what, buddy? <laughs> you just said what we're doing this weekend. We are going to have a chainsaw massacre gladiator wars challenge this weekend. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it will only happen because if Dream is there. Uh-uh. <laughs> if Dream, if Dream doesn't participate, it's not happening. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, Wally won't either, because he's sensible as well. Sensible? Insane. Are you but kidding me? We built tanks and ships, and they do all the blowing up. Yeah. Um, the, the Empyrean and is... And SVs, like me. Gives me a pure eye. The Empyrean has definitely from... grown to be one of the best games that I have played in years. It... Oh. Currently, I'll back you up on that one, Wolf. Uh, this game, since I started playing it, I have played no other for more than about an hour. So yeah, it's hooked me up by the same time. I'm stuck on this game now forever. Yeah, this is, I, I've been waiting for this kind of game for a long time. Me I've too. always wanted a, a FPS that you could actually take down structures with. And yep. this one, since all the blocks are interactive, uh, you can blast your, your, your way through a, um, a, a POI and, you know, take it out or, or kill other members or... I agree. Know, I dreamt from this game uh, in the years where the computers, uh, you, what started the computers, and there was I dreaming all of over this game. <laughs> yeah, a long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, the only other more game more stable than um, um, space engineers ever will be. Oh, absolutely. I mean, honestly, honestly, there's only two games that I stand by 100% without a doubt. That is Imperion Galactic Survival EGS, which we call it, and Seven Days to Die. Those are the, those are the two best games that have yeah. ever been done to date. I don't care about yeah. Grand Theft Auto. I don't care about Space Engineers. No. I don't care about Minecraft. It, it, these two together, the, the way that they have done them has just been... Everything that everybody's been dreaming of for years, and they, they're actually just putting together and doing it, and, and it's awesome. I give my hat off to, to the devs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
Minecraft, yeah, Minecraft. Minecraft. yes. <laughs> Ma Minecraft is for the side and uh, Imperium for the grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the <laughs> Oh yeah. And now that we can actually implement the uh, the CDs on our planets, and we're actually going to be on foot to start with with chainsaws <laughs> and the CV <laughs> control ship flying around, it's going to be a nightmare when we start 6.0, and I'm going to love every second of it. <laughs> and with yeah, the ability I to reload... I a hundred times in the first day. Come on, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. And the best part is, because we could reload the play fields, and hopefully without the bug that I've been having where it actually messes everything up but it should be able to reload the, the ammo put the resources back the POIs back where they were we can actually tear down all the POIs now without worrying about the drone wave stopping or not have anything left to do on the planet so once we take them all out we'll reset the play field and everybody can go back to having a nightmarish hellish fun but as of uh, the release candidate 2 POIs regenerate so you can just set your uh set your uh, drone base on the planet to regenerate after you know so many uh, after so much time and it doesn't matter who went and raided it it'll just pop back and you'll start having drone waves again which I love that aspect the one thing we got to test those I don't know if it works for the CD patrol ship though it might regenerate the base but it might not bring the CD ship back so the one we shot at right. the other day hasn't come back yeah the one shot down on, on my planet hasn't come back either as it were Osmakar, actually we have quite a bit of uh, tutorial videos and stuff like that if you want to go check out my channel. We have, uh, I did a, a SV build of, called a Hammerhead. I did a step for step, so it's actually four videos long. But you can gladly fast forward, skip different parts just to see how to, to put things together, how the engines and stuff work and, and things like that. Um, tanks, uh, check out, um, what, was, what is it? I can't even remember. The Stalker tank. I did a build for that one. Uh, shows you guys the best way to build a tank for PvP and uh, PvE. It's it's a mix of both on the way I did that build. So it's very very good for PvE um, for an all around tank. And PvP it does it handles itself well too. So it depends on what type you're playing on. Um, but how do you designate a capital ship? As you hit the P, you go to the P menu while you're on the ship, bottom right hand corner down there. You'll see that there's a little tab. You can actually hit the tab thing. It should say private or, or public to start with. Uh, private. It says private to start with. You click on it, it'll say private or public. Now, in order to get it into a faction, you have to first create the faction by going to the factions tab and create a new faction. And then it'll give you the choice in that drop down menu to put it in a faction as well. I hope that helps, but if not, you can always go back and enjoy some of the, the episodes of the videos and you'll catch on. They're, they're quite a bit of fun and they're hilarious and you'll enjoy some of them. <laughs> right? But there's there's ins and outs of making a tank out of Imperion too. Like, uh, you can't just go to World of Tanks and say, ah, I'm going to put that in the game because there's a good chance it may not work exactly the way you want it to. Oh, see, I have a buddy of mine who's in the, the U.S. Navy, and he actually has uh, worked on tanks, too. And he came in and redesigned and, and rebuilt tanks from different eras, and every one of them just got annihilated. Um, That's one of the big things, I suppose, with Imperium, because there's two ways of playing. That but one's mine. Way. Um, you can feel free <laughs> to come over to our community on Steam. I'll get you the link for that. And you can see the different channels of all of our YouTubers and check out all the channels. Some of them have tutorials, guides, everything you could ever dream of. And some are just random idiots running around doing POI smashes. Like, I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we have our days Ooh. where we all just get together and, and just annihilate things just for the heck of it. Because we're tired of it. <laughs> But there's a link to the community, feel free to jump over there. And if you want to, you can also send me a friend invite on Steam and I'll give you an invite to the community and you can have access to the forums and everything and you can chit chat with the guys and get your you know, questions answered. Yeah, we're a friendly <laughs> bunch of people. Honest. Closely we're friendly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well our biggest thing is is especially with us YouTubers, is to inspire the creativity and everything for everyone else. And some that aren't. Yep, his, uh, his YouTube icon is a shield. 
It's actually it's, uh, my family actually, crest. Yep. <laughs> Actually, I actually had a relative of mine find me because he actually saw that shield on there. Was, and his first question to me is, are you a Kirkpatrick? I'm like, yes, I am. He's like, oh, damn, so am I. I was wondering why you had my family crest on there <laughs> and our family motto. So I actually found a distant relative I never even knew about. And so you found good. Welcome to the power of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I had 985 an hour ago. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. I do love the fact that the community is, um, well, probably really, 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 really one of the friendliest communities that have ever been involved in. But it's global because there's some of us here in England, there's a large contingent of you guys from America. There are people from all over the world here, um, and it's just a nice place to be. And there's always somebody logging on at all times. So there's always someone to talk to or get advice from, anything really. Yeah, our whole community is based around the fact that, you know, I get tired of all the, the, the hassles and dealing with servers that only have people on door in the daytime, but they only have them on door at night time. So my whole goal was to set up a server. We have people around the clock. We have, every, we have people from all over the world, including Australia, that play on our server. So. There's people from every time zone, so nobody's ever uh, completely alone, except Red Spec Gaming. His name on YouTube, his actual uh, YouTube name is Red Specs Gaming, but he goes by Jekyll. He comes on early mornings, and he's actually all alone for like the hour that he's on before he goes to work. <laughs> uh, yeah, the full dugger. But other than that, yeah, we have people around the clock. Which I'm very proud of. You know, we have we're we're over 207 members strong in our community, and it's an invite community only. So we're very picky about who we let in. Um, most people don't last very long if they don't. You know, if they're griefers or they're hackers or they're just here to be a nuisance or cause problems. Yeah, the douchebag. They they we make them leave. Simple as that. You know, we've, we've had our share of people join the community and find out they just don't fit in because all they want to do is just PvP and grief people for no reason, but that's not how it works on our server. We actually have fun when we actually battle in space. As you, if you take, <laughs> like, we'll have these epic space <laughs> battles, which you can see on the, the YouTube channel as well, where we actually had a massive uh, space battle between the pirates while the military police was doing a trade mission uh, with the freelancers at the time. The pirates came in and attacked us. We had a blast doing it, too. It was amazing. Even though we had a few stutters and lag because of the amount of weapons fire at the time. <laughs> we also do fun things where we do, like, the uh, pirate ship battles where we've got those... Uh, oh, yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> the, 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 the ships and flew around firing only cannons. <laughs> <laughs> that took a while as well. <laughs> yeah, cannons. Not that effective. Uh, we do have limitations on the, the amount of guns yeah, and stuff it, we have it, on it, ships. It worked better when you actually had them all turned on, too. <laughs> so yeah, there is... Easy, yeah. You can build ships that are like that when people see it, like I did. I built one called the Valhalla. It's the most ridiculously biggest ship ever built in Imperium. And you don't want to fight it. But we did a, a funny video with uh, the Valhalla versus the Grendel. And it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do. Ah, the Valhalla's uh, not I, that scary. I, I would just like to point out that you were on the um, not receiving end. <laughs> well, it wasn't scary <laughs> for you. May have been a little different story for me. <laughs> Half your guns weren't firing. I know. Damn, <laughs> <Dark, laughs> guns weren't firing anyway, stupid server. Nah. I still... I still remember flying one of my little ships out of my capital ship, and then just be, uh, then just sitting in space like, where'd my ship go? Yeah, because I forgot <laughs> that I had it on private and not uh, not in faction. Yep, I've done uh, that too. Chase, Chase with his CV when he came in, he wanted to put his his CV onto um, <laughs> his faction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's already all in it. <laughs> That was an impressive light show. You know, what I really enjoy about Imperion <laughs> is that there really is no limit to how you can build. Well, on our server, there's no limit, I should say. So if you could dream it, you can build it. 
Uh, the only difference, like I said, is we do have limitations on how many turrets you can have and stuff like that. But that's more for lag issue and balance reasons and stuff like that. We don't want flying bricks of guns around our server. We don't allow it, period. This is disgusting. I see a if I see a flying cube flying around my server, it usually ends up with the person sitting there in his cockpit seat trying to say, I swear I had a ship off that to my cockpit. Unless it's a ball cube. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. Cube, cubes make poop. <laughs> I was going to make a whole bunch of Rubik's Cubes just, just to annoy you there, Wolf. I know. And Minecraft heads. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. But. Now, one thing that I do wish uh, I could change in the, um, in, in the building aspect of Imperion is I, I would personally take it off the grid system and put it on a base system so if you put a 45 degree angle you could put a block on that 45 degree angle and then that block would be oriented 45 degrees to the rest of the ship yeah yeah does that make sense i think that slightly went 45 degrees over my head <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm not all there today guys for the back to way too much <laughs> but uh, let me give you guys some details about our server and our community and how things work our, like I said our community is an invite community only um, we don't say no to anyone except for if you're underage of course if you're on the age of 18 um, we do have certain guidelines that have to be met before we allow somebody to join us that's under the age of 18 we are an adult community there are discussions that happen especially in the late night hours that we don't need people's parents coming and saying you I can't believe you did I'm like, no, I don't think so. You know, I'm a, I'm a daddy. Uh, you know, I got four kids myself. My son's sitting behind me while we're talking about all this. He's laughing his butt off. By the way. My uh, kid learned a couple new words today. And thank I'm you, not, Osmacar, I'm for not too your, happy. Uh, a few of your language words you put in that text chat that got my son giggling over here. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that uh, we usually don't say no to anybody everybody's more than welcome except for like I said if we find out somebody joins us just to be a, a griefer or a douchebag altogether we usually ask them to leave politely first um, because we're here to have fun we're here to enjoy ourselves be creative make great content videos the best we can for people to enjoy and we don't need that mucked up by anyone here that's just here to cause problems so if you feel like that's not, if you're that kind of person that just wants to have fun and enjoy yourself, you're more than welcome to come over and join us. Um, just send me uh, or Magic Slayer an invite uh, on Steam. It's Magic Slayer, even though his Twitch stream is Magic Sensei. Senshi. Senshi. Whatever. English lessons again. But because somebody <laughs> took Magic Slayer. Now, I've been Magic Slayer for almost 20 years, and uh, somebody's like, Hey, Magic Slayer, that, that, that sounds good. And it's like, yeah, it sounds good. I did it. I made it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still bitter about don't, that. Don't, don't worry about being from England, mate. Come, come to this awesome game. We show you everything. <laughs> we are very noob friendly. We have a lot of people who actually started off their first day of ever playing Imperion with us. And they, they're still with us playing and having a blast. Um... So, like I said, any of you guys that want to join us, even if you didn't even speak in the chat, feel free to send us a message on Steam and, and invite us a friend, and we'll get you an invite to the community and get you going. Um, if you enjoy Imperium, you will be on the list. Now, the best thing about us is we don't just have servers for Imperium. We have Arc Survival Evolved with both the, the maps Scorched Earth linked and clustered into the island, which is free to play by anyone in the community. You can go and use that all you want. Same with the TeamSpeak. We own our TeamSpeak servers and our TeamSpeak, so... Anyone can come in and use the team speaks like a telephone if they need to because they've got to pay their cell phone bill and they need to call their mommy. I understand it's happened. Um, the there is one, the, the one thing about our other servers for the Imperion server and the Seven Days to Die server is we rent those servers. Every one of us pays twelve dollars a year for our slots. I pay for the server. Everyone else pays for the slots. And like I said, it's only twelve dollars a year. I didn't say a month. I don't want your money. It literally is a dollar a month just so that way you can pay for your slot to, and we can keep it up and running. I'm a stay-at-home dad now. I'm retired. I don't make money. So I can't afford, I'm not rich, to pay for everybody. But it's it's worth it. Trust me. We have a lot of fun. We all know you're rolling in it. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I would love to be making enough money on YouTube at least just so my wife can stay home from work. That would be awesome. 
Um, we do have uh, donation links for anyone out there who wants to help support our community, even if you're a part of the community as well. Um, I even set up a Patreon uh, 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 page just yesterday too. We also have a tip page, and inside the discussion forums on the community page, there's also a donation link there for a direct uh, donation, so that way you don't lose any of the donation money to the community. If you want to send us $10, you actually will send $10. Use Patreon. They take like 10% of it. That's why I don't even like Patreon, but it's there. <laughs> yeah. I just think about that stupid money thing. We do work money, with people about the server slots. If you actually have money issues, so all, we got, all you got to do is just talk to me about it first. And We have some people that will even sponsor other people that have slots on the server. And... I'll just get in touch with them, and if there's still some of them are still willing to do it, we can pop in slots for people. That's not an issue. We just got to talk about it first. Is all. We don't turn anyone away just because they have financial problems. Like I said, I'm a stay-at-home dad. I know all about money being a problem. I mean, heck, all I do is hang out with these guys all day and run service for them. I understand. <laughs> they suck the life out of my freaking wallet. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He loves on the topic of money. Uh, I do have a campaign on GoFundMe going right now. Um, it's to expand uh, my content, but to also offer a new service to those in our community and uh, those viewers who have creations on certain games that they would like to actually hold a physical copy of. So you build an awesome ship in Imperion, and you want that ship to put to on your dresser with. or on your mantle? Oh yeah, put on your put on your desk. Um, I I have the, I I have the knowledge that I need to do that. I just need the equipment, and that's where the money comes in. Uh, the GoFundMe, go check that out. Um, it's uh, we'll put a link in the description, right? Well. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'll definitely make sure it's in the description on my video. And that way you guys can have access to it. You can even just link the video that, that links to it because it's the same same video that uh, that I have on the GoFundMe that links to the Yeah, that's what he's on about, Osmaka. Yep, 3D printing. You get 3D printing of the ships from the game or other games, etc., etc. Yep, it's a, there's a specific 3D printer um, I'm trying to get. It's called the Form 2. And it's an SLA printer. It's a stereo lithography apparatus, which takes and shoots a laser in, in this vat of goo and solidifies it. So when it pulls it up, it's a full 3D print, but it has such a level of detail that there's no finish work. Like it's, uh, if you've ever played Warhammer 40K, that's what they use to make their uh, prototype models before before they send it to uh, to become molded for the uh, for the um, oh, what is that? It's uh, pressure molds, I think. Yep. Yeah, well, that sounds really nice. But definitely on that, I'll definitely have a link inside the YouTube videos as well for you guys to actually be able to get to his uh, GoFundMe page. So we can actually get that 3D printer going. Um, one thing that I will be doing in the future when it comes to when he finally gets that machine is I will be setting up a website that people can go to and actually place orders in for that kind of stuff to be done just so that way Magic can get it done. And there will be no questions about prices or what it would cost to do it and everything. It will all be right there and easy to do. And it will be awesome. I can't wait for it. I mean, I got stuff that I want had to have made myself now. Like yeah, when, yeah. when I finish that Valkyrie, when it's complete, I want that. <laughs> oh yeah, when it's, when it's finished, yeah. It's like then then I may have to actually print in uh, in sections. <laughs> 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 this is just a large one. Just think of the postage. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, injection molds. That's that's what I was I was thinking of the injection molding. And when it comes to the YouTube channels, guys, when you guys have any ideas or anything, the topics you want to bring up in one of those, uh, <laughs> our weekly uh, blogs here, feel free to ask us. Feel free to comment in the videos and let us know that you know you wanted to bring this topic up, and we'll definitely discuss things inside the next weekly blog um, about any ideas that you guys come up with. Um, 
maybe you guys have an idea for an event that we could do for a week, and we could probably put it together and do it, and we could discuss it during the blog, which I think would be awesome. So feel free to jump in anytime, guys, and let us know what you think, your ideas, your like topics. Yeah, send us some challenges. Oh, yeah. Give challenges as well. Yeah, definitely give us some challenges. You know, we, we have no limits. Boy, if you, if you can think boy. of it, we could build it. And if we can't, we'll have you come on the server and do it your damn self. I can't all of I Romania. Oh, Osbaka. <laughs> There's lots, lots of gunfire in this game. <laughs> <laughs> right? Usually in the back of someone's head. <laughs> 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 But when it comes to the normal gameplay series, guys, bear in mind that we have been working a lot on the movie. We've gotten over 50% of it finished and complete now. we just got a few more scenes to cut and shoot, and we'll actually be able to release the movie when 6.0 drops. Hopefully, we'll actually have it finished by then. Um, so, we got a lot going on. That's the reason why we haven't had our normal daily in-server gameplay, seeing what's been going on with each faction, the trade runs, and all that stuff. It's because we've been working our butts off when it comes to the new map. The new planets, the new play styles, the new rules, the the, the, the movie, I mean, you name it. There's just, there's just so much to do and there's just so much we've been working our butts off for because we want to make sure you guys enjoy this movie, you know. And when it comes to our, our new season at 6.0, we want to make sure you guys enjoy the series that we put out for each channel. So we got to make sure that that game plays there and that it fits in on the server too. And that we also have a lot of fun. That's the whole point of this is that we enjoy doing it. We want to enjoy what we're doing. So we got to make sure it's enjoyable for every play style as well. I mean, we have the Freelancer faction. They are more of a PvE style with PvP involved um, when it comes to them being attacked by pirates and raiders. And then we have the more hardcore PvP style, which is the Space Nomads. They can only live in space. They don't live on planets. The only mi uh, bases they're allowed to have is their mining facilities. And they can't even stay on them. Then you've got the... Uh, the standard gameplay style for PvP, which is the Military Police Faction. Um, they do a bit of both of PvE, PvP, they do mostly building, mining, patrolling, uh, a little bit of roleplay here and there, and stuff like that. And then you got the hardcore PvP players, which are the Pirates, and now the Mercenaries, which is a new faction that will be coming out in the new season, or as soon as 6.0 comes out, when we set up the server, we go out, we get the Mercenary Faction jumping in. The lead guy for the mercenary faction is actually the averted cow, so everything will be built upside down. Oh, right. <laughs> hey! <laughs> now, I, I am not upside down. The entire universe is upside down. I'm right side up. Yeah, now, right. now, the kicker about the the, the kicker about the, the the new mercenary faction is is they can't do anything unless they're paid for it. So they're going to be paid by other factions to do anything. So one faction could, uh, let's say, the freelancers could pay them to go and and attack one of the, the the military police vessels just to piss them off and they can go do that they could pay the the pirates could pay the mercenaries to go and raid one of the mining facilities from the freelancers and steal all their ore and give it to them as long as they're paid for it so or unless, vice versa they can pay us to defend said properties exactly so unless they're paid they're not doing anything except building, mining, and doing their own thing. Now, the mercenary faction and the military police faction are at war. There is no peace between these two factions at any given time. So if these two factions come across each other in space, they're fighting. There's there's no not. They're gonna be fighting each other, period, every single time. So there's always gonna be something interesting going on between the, the military police faction and the merc faction from this point on. The pirate faction, like I said, is gonna be awesome. They have their all PvP. You know, they're always raiding, stealing, and for instance, if they come across one of the freelancer ships, space nomad ships, military ships, mining out in space, they can go and disable it and steal their cargo and everything that they've got out of it and leave the ship derelict in space. When uh, when we say factions, we mean uh, starting groups. Um, you can have your own individual faction within that starter group. Say, uh, like, you can be a pirate and have... Uh, and th th this we actually did um, have a faction called Gas and Guns. You're still pirates, but you're in the faction of magic. Gas and Guns. But Mike, you just about passed the mushroom. <laughs> Did I just passed the mushroom. But the only yes, faction man. that doesn't oh, have really? separate factions is the military police faction. They're a community-based faction. There's only Mushroom. one faction, but all the other factions have other factions. What I mean by factions is the origin start. So if you start on the one planet, you're you're starting on the military police side. Then you're in the military police, 
and you're in the military police faction, there's only one. But if you start in the pirate side of things, for instance, you start in their home world, you're a pirate, you're a full-time pirate, but you could start your own faction or join up with one of the other factions. Same with all the other ones except for the mercenary faction. They can only have one faction as well. So that's why the military police and the, the merc factions are set up that way, is because they're always at war with each other. They have to have only one faction. But you know what? I might actually... We, want, we need to talk about that. We'll probably do that in the next week's blog, is discuss the Merc, the Merc faction having more than one faction in it or not. Because if we could have more than one Merc faction, that would make things interesting. There's, uh, I have ideas for Poisonous that. Poisonous Magic. Poisonous part. But it's based on the way I want to set up the faction to begin with. Well, we'll, we'll definitely discuss that and uh, bring that up in the next week's blog for sure. Magic, you will die. The only place for yeah. peace is my shipyard. There is one playfield, yes. It's called Wallenstein Shipwright. Excuse me. It is the only PvE playfield in the entire server. No yeah. normal gameplay takes place there whatsoever. It is literally a build yard for Wallenstein only. No one else is allowed to join the faction or anything. This is his playfield to make his massive, beautiful creations that he does. And then we will be doing weekly showcases on everything that he builds there starting in the next season. So make sure you guys stick around and, and catch those out. Because these ships are just amazing this guy builds. That's, that's the reason why I, this guy has earned his place to have his own play field on our server. It's because he just, all he does is build and, and he builds the most amazing things. It's just incredible. Beautiful, so, beautiful ships. In order, Thank you. the one, uh, the cheap ones. Thank you. <laughs> One thing that we do on the server is, he, like I said, it's a shipwright, it's a shipyard. That's where you go and buy and sell your ships. You can go to him, sell your resources to him. You can, buy, you can sell your ship and buy a new ship that he designed and built from him. And it's all based on the, the price of what the, the in-game prices are now that I'm actually going to be using the developer side of prices because they're worse than the ones that I did and everybody complained about them. So, you know what? We're going to go with the vanilla standard sell prices. So you can actually go and sell your ships and buy new ships, or you can pay Wallenstein to build you a ship, and, and and you can have him build it to your design too if you wanted to. There's no blueprints on our server whatsoever anymore. You can blueprint your stuff so that way you have it in your library, you don't lose it. But in order to get your ship back if it got blown up, you'd actually have to go to Wallenstein and buy it. We actually do have a, an economy set up on our server, so you want to buy and trade and sell and have yourself what I call a slushy fund. That slushy fund is what is used to replace anything you lose so if you lost your base your ship and everything and you have you, you made sure you had the funds you could just go to Wallenstein and buy it all back so there is no getting reset to one unless you didn't buy and sell and trade and make some money mm, slushies <laughs> but I hate to say it that's all the time we got for this week we have been here for an hour and I'm not going to go over that so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, weekly blog, and if, uh, if it becomes something you guys like and enjoy, we'll definitely be doing it every week on Monday at noon Eastern Time. We will be going live on Team uh, Twitch. Uh, we'll probably have it set up so it's on Magic Senshi's channel. <laughs> and Lord Jericho's, if he's around, he'll be uh, able to Twitch it as well. And if you, miss, be, yeah. if you miss the, twi uh, the live streams, you can catch them on uh, the YouTube channels. I will definitely be having it out. Um, every Monday right afterwards but it probably won't come out until about 3 p.m. Eastern time uh, depending on how long it takes to upload this thing so like I said I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys will be back next week so oh, remember to play hard and get hard and until next time take it easy good day guys bye bye have a good one ta-da oh, they, they, they...